the beak. Look at the teeth on this thing. Insane. Like, that is one scary fish right there. It's a beast. It's a, it's a big fish. They do get bigger. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, things I've seen on the internet about having um, wire cutters, tin snips. And I did that once before, but if you don't have them, and I don't right now, this is the other way to do it. Again, you, you're going like upwards and angle upwards into the scales. Like, this is the only way. You can never go this way, because look at just gonna and it is super super hard plated so you kind of go from back here you can see where it lifts up from this side so you go underneath it from here that's the weakness in these fish and then you follow where the scales are going and that's kind of like your cheat code to get through this stuff now it's again this is not like a normal fish it's not as easy as a normal fish but this is how you can get it. There's a lot of meat in this. Oh, this is the one of the fillets from that giant gar. What we're gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna cut it up into small pieces, one and a half, just so you can see the coloration of this meat. It is very firm and quite white. We're just gonna do a basic fish fry with this one. And uh, I'm gonna try to do another recipe with like fish balls and poor man's lobster. Uh, maybe for tomorrow night or another night. I'm gonna freeze some of this up for another time, but fresh. I just wanna do a quick fish fry. Something simple and delicious. I'm just gonna cut this into like different size sections. I'm gonna start out with a couple small medallion size ones like that. Just kind of find the consistency that I like out of this. Cause this has uh, got a texture and a consistency that's a little different. I'm do a big hunk like that. The tail section should be fine. Like that, like that, I'm going to try some in an egg wash and some straight in the seasoned flour. Basic seasoned flour, got some crushed crackers in there. Um, with all of these I'm going to put a little Cajun and Old Bay on them for extra flavor directly to the fish. And I did soak this gar in milk overnight as well. Just to pull out, I did realize that I noticed that this fish was very bloody. And I wanted to make sure I got all the blood and any any odd flavors that might be in it. It might have tasted just fine, but it's a safe bet to uh, just make sure that any weird flavors that might have been in there will, get, will come out of the fish. All right, so now we got some flour in a plate. First thing you do, just hit it with some flour. Then into the egg wash. This uh, is mixed egg, milk, and some Texas peat hot sauce. You could do Frank's or any of your favorite hot sauce and with it adds a little extra flavor. I'm just gonna coat that and uh, I think this oil is ready. I put it at 375 as normal. Yep. Perfect. Put that one in there. I'm also gonna put some in just straight with no egg wash. Just a seasoned flour and crackers. Try that too. See how that works out. See it's cooking just perfect. Now when that floats to the top, we'll know it's, it's ready to come out and when it gets to the right golden brown. Now again, you don't want this ever to be too hot because it'll get golden brown and burn before it's actually cooked through. Between 360, 375 is the preferred temperature I like. All right, we got our last ones finishing up here. They do look really, really good. Decided to give these a try. They always have like a, a plate with some paper towel on it to help absorb some of that oil. Turn this off. Now I want to move these pieces over. I'm going to saute them in a pan with butter. But first, let's try 
this piece right here. So first one that was done, it should, let's try it without any hot sauce, so straight up. You break it, look how white that meat is. Wow, that's super white. Looks really good. Wow. Hmm. First thing I noticed, I've heard this before, I agree. I've been to Miami, spent my summers in Florida growing up, so I've had my fair share of fried alligator. I'm telling you what, it really tastes like and has a texture of alligator. It really, really does. Wow. It's completely different than normal fish. It's like a real meaty, chewy, like alligator tail. That's really good. Hmm. No, I'm gonna try sauteing on one piece and see how it goes. I don't want to do too many until I know it's good. This. All right, so I got butter and a little bit of oil in this pan right now. I'm actually using uh, avocado oil, and, uh, but mainly butter. Just gonna saute this guy in there and see how that is. Um, yeah, it is really good, but it's a bizarre texture. All right, so let me have a little salad. I have one little piece here that I sauteed in butter oil. Um, I had that, you know, the Cajun seasoning, Old Bay, and some garlic powder on it. And uh, let's see. I need the knife. I'm telling you, one thing I noticed right away is the chewiness of this fish is really. Like I said, like alligator, it's, uh, it's very unique. Hmm. I actually like that. Even better than the fried. Wow. That tastes really good. That's <clears throat> super interesting though. It's just not like fish at all. I did bust open the bigger one too. I would recommend for sure Whenever you do these to cut them thin, the thicker pieces are just too chewy. And uh, let me be honest, it's like, it's good, it's not the best fish for sure. There is a slight flavor, fishy to gamey flavor to it, it's not bad. Like the, initially it's good, but then there's like a little bit of a aftertaste. I think soak it in buttermilk would help get rid of that. But really it's not bad, it's not bad, it's not great. It'd be, uh, somewhere in the middle range um, of fish, but it is totally edible. It can be really good, I think, with certain recipes. This is just a way to get meat on the table if you need it. If one dies, you don't want it to go to waste, cook it up and eat it. And I think the hush puppy way is gonna be really good, but this one here that I just sauteed, mm, the flavor is excellent with the Cajun on it. Mm. And the fried one, It's really not bad at all. For a gar, I'm surprised. So, but the learning lesson here for sure is thinner because it is so much chewier. And it's just easier to eat and taste better when it's thinner, so. All right, so uh, just tried something. I wasn't sure how it was gonna work, but it turned out incredible. I just tried a piece of this. This is the gar. And this is called a poor man lobster recipe. I basically just took this pan and uh, filled the pan with water, put about a cup of sugar in there, and then cut a, a lemon in half, squeezed it in there, and put, put the lemon in. Got it boiling hot and took these pieces of gar, set them in there and let them boil until they floated to the surface, and I took them out. And then I take a piece that's very firm and just cover it in butter like this and let me tell you what that's ridiculous they call it poor man's lobster i'm not i grew up in upstate new york i've been to maine and had lobster that's unbelievable i was questioning whether i keep a gar or not i mean the fried one was good, but th this is ridiculous. It tastes just like lobster. I'm not kidding you. This is like, it really tastes like lobster. That's amazing. This is gar, okay? This is gar, long nose gar. 
I can do not. That the texture and the flavor tastes so much like crab and really like mainly like lobster. I'm just completely blown away. You know, that's, that's legit. I will definitely be keeping guard again for that recipe. I'm not spending a ton of money on lobster. Apparently, so the, lem the, the lemon's really important. That helps change the texture. If you just did sugar water, you'd get the sweetness, but you wouldn't get the texture. But using the sugar and the lemon gives it, somehow changes its texture. And then putting it with the butter, I'm telling you, it's legit. That is just unbelievable. I can't believe how how spot on that is. That is truly a poor man's lobster. I mean, just go, we can go catch free guard. There's more than more than enough to last a lifetime. That's for sure. I froze the rest, I'll try it. Frozen sometimes. Certain fish freeze better than others. I've noticed some fish you can freeze, take it out, thaw it, cook it, tastes fine. Other fish, I've tried, uh, I think, I'm gonna try again with uh, the freezer, uh, air freezer, but. I've tried just Ziploc bags and it came out awful with like flathead catfish. But we'll see how this works. All I know is fresh, doing it this way, unbelievable. So again, this is always fun learning things with you. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. And in the meantime, God bless. See you next time.